Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to use SQL Alchemy and Pandas to import CSV data. So in this lecture I'm going to show you how to import CSV data into a database utilizing SQL Alchemy and Pandas. So first off, let's go ahead and create the data. Now before that, uh, I need to show you our um, uh, CSV file. So it is orders. I have provided it for you here. And you're going to see we have property ID. So, and then we have property order ID, property ID, we have property city, property state, product ID, product category, then we have product name, quantity, product price, and order total. So it is like a very gigantic file. I think there are more than 4,000. There we go. So 4,400, there are still a lot of them. So you can see we should get to the bottom of them. So maybe there are even more than those. So almost 5,001. So 5,000, <clears> excuse me. So we have 5,000 records. It is very empirical for us to limit our queries. So uh, pandas, we're going to get to pandas, what it is. Just first off, I need you to go ahead and create that database. So let me comment this one out. Let me right click here. Let's pass in the password. Set enter, grab it, put it there. Now we are going to create a database. Create database. And we are going to call it orders. Perfect, the database is created. Head over to Python and within the virtual environment, first off, go ahead and install Pandas. I have installed Pandas globally. The reason for that is the slow internet connection and it takes like a long time. It took, I think, two to three hours for me. So I'm not gonna do it again. I think uh, I have installed it so I can show it to you. Uh, pip list. It should be within the list and uh, first install pandas. I should give you, I should write this out, install, and I'm going to give you the command as well. So you're going to say pip and install pandas, then uh, go ahead and say pip and install uh, SQL alchemy, uh, sorry, my SQL connector Python. So I'm just going to pass it there and eventually you're going to say pip env install sql alchemy so you need to install all these three to follow with this follow along these are prerequisites we already have installed connect sql connector and sql alchemy just install the pandas so it should be in here um where are you pandas it's not in here for some reason i've installed it globally so if i say import pandas Okay, I think I need to install it again. Oh, I, it is not available. So I'm going to run it. So I'm going to say pip env install pandas. Uh, I'm not going to install it uh, in, a in a virtual environment. I'm going to install it globally. Uh, pandas. Just click on it and you're going to see that it is taking. Okay, it is installing. There we go. Did I not see it in here? It's not available in here. Installing collected packages, detected NumPy pandas. Uh -huh. Let's wait a couple of minutes. So until this is being installed, we need to import some stuff. So the first one is going to be from SQL Alchemy, which is already installed. We are going to import perfect successfully installed NumPy pandas. So it was installed beforehand. Perfect. That is okay. So you need to install it anyway. I'm going to import a uh, column, integer, now you know what these are, integer. I'm going to import string as well as float this time. From SQL Alchemy, we are going to import, uh, you know what, we have already done these, so I'm just going to speed through them. And import create engine, session maker, relationship, and declarative base. We are going to import pandas as well, there we go. Just make sure the uh, virtual environment is activated. Just make sure, okay, it is already activated. Now, uh, we are going to grab our engine. 
so I'm gonna say create engine we have already done this so I'm gonna say uh, my SQL plus my SQL connector connector and I'm gonna pass in our root which is which has the password this one so this is the password for root it is available at localhost localhost uh, port 3306 and it is the orders so you have to keep that in mind it is the orders and we are going to set the echo to true so perfect now we are going to create a declarative base as well so it is declarative base there we go now just to um, shorten this lecture because we have talked a about a lot of very very complicated stuff before and there is no need for me to write all of them by hand I'm just gonna copy paste them uh, we are because this is uh, SQL alchemy ORM we are gonna use an object centric view so in objects we can create classes we have a class of purchase we have pass and passed in the base we are we have already talked about this so we are gonna create a table by the name of purchases so if we come here and if we take a look at that uh, come on buddy so not here I think the uh, this terminal is better so if I sh if I say use uh, orders and then if I say show tables we shouldn't have anything it says empty set so we don't have anything in there we are going to create the purchases table this is going to be created within the orders schema these are going to be the columns we know that everyone is a column this is the column type and this is whether it's a primary key or a foreign key so we have order ID integer primary key is true so it is a primary key property ID is in as an integer property state uh, city state they are both strings 250 characters property ID sorry product ID is integer product category is string product name again string quantity is integer product price is float and order total is float as well we are going to create a string representation now you can see why this is really difficult for me to write out uh, this is going to uh, relate back to our class purchase so we have make sure everything has to be in order so we have order ID property ID property state city and state so we have property city and state these are their indices uh, product ID product category perfect product name quantity so we have product name quantity then we have product price and order total product price and order total and then we basically format them perfect so after we are done with all of that uh, we are going to connect to our database uh, to and to the already created table which we created right here so I'm going to say base dot metadata data and dot create all create everything everything that we have passed in here and let's run the engine on it now we are going to dive into the world of pandas now pandas is a software library written for Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis in particular it offers data structures and operations for manipulating numerical tables and time series now pandas is a very 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 important and famous library when it comes to working with data science related tasks this is where you can find pypi.org this is the pandas everything you need to know about it you can read more about it there I'm just gonna copy this link and put it down here for you we're going to use pandas like very very little so first off I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna call it file name what is the name of our file it is orders because it is within the same directory I'm just gonna say orders if it were inside a folder you need to provide the name of that <clears throat> excuse me the name of that folder as well so um, now that we have provided the name for this file because this is a CSV file we need to import the data now see uh, pandas has a very uh, cool a uh, method that is read CSV 
and uh, which this read CSV, we are just going to pass in our file name. So file underscore name, perfect. So we have pandas read CSV. This is going to return for us what something called a data frame. Now I do not want to dive into what a data frame is, but just for now, it, just make sure you understand that it returns a data frame. That's it for now. So, so far the CSV data is in the application memory. Therefore, we need to write it out to our database. So how can we grab that and write it out inside our database? We are going to grab our data frame, which is going to allow us to do exactly that. And we are going to say to SQL. So we are going to pass in our connection object as an engine. Also our table name. So I'm going to say con dash engine that we have created. So that is the first keyword argument. Then the name of the table, which is located within this class. So purchase dot table uh, name underscore underscore. And if this table exists, so we are going to say if exists, 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 then we are going to append it. Perfect. Append it. Now, by default, pandas is going to give us an extra column of indices or indexes. We just want to remove it for now. So I'm just going to say index false. Save everything. Now, this is going to import our data into our database. Now, there is something that pandas actually requires, and that is your CSV file. The, it, it must have columns, all right? So pandas, what it is going to do is it is going to grab these and match them with the columns that you have created, that we have created right here. And it is going to insert each value in its specific column automatically. So working with a session right here is not actually required. But if we want to retrieve data, or if you want to make sure that the data is imported correctly, we need to create session anyway. So I'm going to say session uh, equals to uh, session maker. So session maker. Perfect. Have we imported that? Session maker. There we go. And then we are going to configure that. Confi uh, configure. Come on, man configure so configure we are going to bind it to engine Let's bind it to engine perfect and then we are going to say session I'm just going to set it to s equal to session all of this it is not giving me any intelligence that's why there are a lot of errors i'm really used to it it's not Good thing, but I'm really addicted to it. All right, so um, let's grab the results, put them inside a results variable. So we have results. We are going to query that. We already know this, that uh, to be able to grab the results, we need to query the session. We need to pass in the class that we have created. And let's limit it to 10. You can see that in SQL, we said limit by 10 or limit 10. In here, we actually have like a super important method, and that is going to be limit 10. And let's grab all those from that limit 10. Let's iterate over the results for result and results print result. Save that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, there are no errors. So let me grab this file name. Let's copy it, close that. Let's say python dot dot py. Okay, there we go. File name is not defined. F oh, I misspelled it. I misspelled it. This is just a typo. Most of the errors are typos, so they do not count. Let's see if we have. So there we go. That that part was correct. The uh, this part up until here we did well. Just we had a problem there. So let's rerun this. Oh come on, purchase. I did mistype this again. So there we go. Told you most of them are 
just typos just make sure everything is correct perfect let's save that hopefully no more errors let's run this okay there we go so we got 10 items from there now we could match them so we have order id 1 order id 2 all the way to order id 10. Uh, if we take a look at our file uh, order id 1 is las vegas nevada uh furnishing it is office chair so if you come here and if you take a look at that it's las vegas nevada furnishing office chair quantity one purchase uh, product price was 85 or total is of course 85 there were only one product there we go so we have uh let's look, take a look at the object number the order 10 so it's cincinnati ohio maintenance tape measure two tape measures each one for eight bucks that's very expensive 16 so let's take a look at that Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, maintenance, ma tape measure 2, 8, and 16. Perfect. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one. And oh, oh, just before wrapping up, you could take a look at your data within the uh, MySQL workbench as well. So first off, let's take a look at that as well. So we are going to say show table. Okay. Yeah, I think it is show tables. Yeah, this one. There we go. So we have a purchases table. We can say select. Now, if you do this here it, and you do not limit it, you're going to get 5,000 records. Just to make sure you understand the idea. From uh, purchases uh, limit 10, I think. There we go. So we got only 10 from there. Perfect. And we can take a look at the GUI as well. Let's go to sales. Uh, it was orders, right? So purchases, not there, just there we go. So you can see that we have inserted our data. So the whole idea of what we are actually trying to do is, I'm actually trying to teach you how you can grab your Python applications, connect it to a backend database. Of course, the databases are all backend. And how you can leverage this entire process to your benefit even if you have like 5,000 records you can insert them using pandas the reason that we used pandas is because pandas is lightning fast like numpy which we talked about is very fast and this is actually what pandas was created to do so with only like these three lines we were able to do the same thing we did that with my with my sequel as well and our code was our code got a little bit com uh, complicated but with pandas we ended up with a more pythonic code which is easy to read so i do prefer working with pandas as opposed to working with my like writing sql queries in my python code so um, that's it for this lecture see you in the next one which is going to be your challenge so at the end of each of these three chapters sqlite mysql and postgres you're going to have one gigantic like colossal uh, challenge to just uh, just make sure you have learned everything correctly and to the point so you can really use these in a real world scenario see you in the next one